Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace coming to you live from Cisco Live in California. And I wanted to give you an update on a portion of the big news that Cisco dropped this morning. Now, right after it came out, I got online and I gave you a, a live stream of the new certification news that the CCNAs that we know and love today are kind of going away and they're going to be replaced by a consolidated CCNA one CCNA instead of multiple CCNAs. And there's also going to be new CCMP tracks. And there's information we need to know about what we've done already toward our certification. How's that going to apply if we want to get the new certification? There's even a little bit of a CCIE update. And I gave you the high-level overview of that in a previous post, but I wanted to start diving into some of this information because there's a lot to it. And what we're going to be doing in uh, this quick video is I wanted to delve into what's going on with CCNA certification. Specifically, right now we've got all sorts of CCNAs out there. We've got CCNA data center and security and collaboration and route switch and on and on and on. Well, today, June 10th, as I'm recording this, 2019, Cisco introduced an unprecedented revamp of their certification program. And this video is going to delve into one part of that announcement the CCNA announcement. That's probably what's on most people's minds. Now, first, if you're currently pursuing your CCNA and routing and switching, or, or really any other certification for that matter, I want to set your mind at ease. Don't panic. Uh, in fact, you have until February the 24th of 2020 to finish your CCNA certification. And once you do, when February the 24th rolls around, you're automatically going to be grandfathered in and have the new CCNA certification. So it's not like an employer is going to look at you and say, you've got the old certification. We want somebody with the new certification. No, no, no. You're going to have the new certification. You just need to get your current certification using the current exams before the 24th of February next year. So February the 23rd would be your last date to test. And if you get your certification in collaboration or security or cyber ops, not only will you get the new CCNA certification, you're going to be given what Cisco's calling a badge. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but you get a badge indicating your area of specialization, whether it's security or collaboration or, or whatever. So Cisco recommends, and I do too, if you're already preparing for a CCNA in any of the tracks, keep going. You've got seven months before this happens. Seven months should be enough time for you to complete your CCNA certification. However, if you do want to challenge yourself with the new composite exam or, or you're just curious about what's on it, that's what I'm going to cover in this video. We're going to delve into what's new with the CCNA certification. And there's going to be a link in the description of this video that is a link to a PDF that breaks down line by line what's on the new exam. But here in this video, I want to give you a detailed explanation of what's on the exam. First of all, let's just start at the super high level, the main topic areas. Topic area number one is network fundamentals. That's 20% of your exam. The next topic area is network access. That's 20% of your exam. The next area, IP connectivity. That's 25% of your exam. Next up, IP services for 10% of the exam. Security fundamentals, that's 15%. And finally, the big one, the big new one, is automation and programmability. It's only 10% of the exam, but it's new. And we'll talk about that. Let's take each of those different topic areas and dive in a little bit more in depth. Wow, I apologize if I'm sweating. I'm in I'm in this little soundproof, well, semi-soundproof booth here on the floor of Cisco Live. So it is toasty in here, and uh, you might be able to hear some background noise and see some people moving around outside. But um, I wanted to get this information to you as quickly as possible. The first topic area is network fundamentals. Now, here's where you're going to need to know some basics. Just What's the role of a router? What's the role of a switch in a network? What are the different types of topologies out there? Know some cabling information about fiber cabling and copper cabling. How do you troubleshoot cable issues with copper and fiber? You need to be able to compare and contrast TCP and UDP. You need to know about IP version 4 addressing, IP version 6 addressing. How do you go into different operating systems like... like uh, Microsoft Windows or Linux or Mac OS and verify IP address information like what's the IP address and the subnet mask, the default gateway and the DNS servers and things like that. 
The next topic area is network access, again worth 20%. And here you need to know about VLANs and trunking and ether channel in addition to wireless concepts, what are the pieces and parts that make up a wireless network? Next up, IP connectivity worth 25% of the exam. Here you're going to focus on routing primarily. How does routing work? How does a, how does a router make a forwarding decision based on layer 3 information? And the single routing protocol, in addition to static routes, but the single routing protocol that you're going to be focusing on is OSPF version 2. Notice the absence of RIP. Notice the absence of OSPF version 3, which is used for IPv6 routing. The blueprint specifically mentions OSPF version 2. There's no BGP mentioned either. And in addition to that, you're going to need to know about some first hop redundancy protocols, like how does HSRP or VRRP or GLBP work. Next up, is IP services. That's going to make up 10% of the exam. In this category, you're going to explore various IP services such as NTP, the network time protocol, DHCP, the dynamic host configuration protocol, SNMP, simple network management protocol, and QoS, quality of service. The next category is security fundamentals, making up 15% of the exam. This section is going to introduce you to security fundamentals along with a discussion of some specific security mechanisms, including uh, VPNs. And there's a bunch of security features available on our Cisco Catalyst switches that are going to be covered there as well. You're even going to get into wireless network security. And finally, the big one. Only 10%, but this represents a, a big, big change in CCNA curriculum. It's automation and programmability. Now, yes, the current version of CCNA Route Switch does have some references to northbound and southbound APIs, and, and it talks a little bit about uh, the APIC EM, but this is big. Here in the automation and programmability area, we're starting to move away from the command line interface and get into controller-based SDN. We're talking about Puppet, Chef, JSON encoded data. And I'm definitely going to be coming out with some new training for the CCNA, but I've got to emphasize, you've still got seven months to get the current CCNA in writing and switching, and that's what I would personally do. It's not like you're going to go into an employer and they're going to say, oh, you have the old CCNA. We want somebody with the new CCNA. No. On, on February the 24th, if you have the current CCNA today, you're going to be granted the new CCNA. So personally, I would get the current CCNA right now. You've got seven months to do it. And I want to help you with that. Specifically, later this month, I'm going to be coming out with a free live training that I'm doing online. Uh, full disclosure, I'm recording a course on uh, CCNA foundations that will help people going after the current CCNA or the next CCNA. And you're welcome to watch for free. I want to help you out. I want to help this community. So even though I'm going to be selling it later, if you're available, you can sign up and just tune in for free. Again, it's three days beginning June the 25th. If you want more information on that, you can go to kwtrain.com slash CCNA hyphen foundations. Again, that's kwtrain.com slash ccna hyphen foundations. And I've got a link for that in the show notes if you want to go check that out and attend, again, completely for free. It's three days. We're going to have 12 hours of training on ccna foundational concepts. Lots and lots of theory that's going to support your ccna studies. I want you to get the current CCNA within the next seven months if you don't already have it. Or if you want to go after the new one, I want to support you there as well. So make sure, put it on your calendar, ask for time off, whatever you need to do. Be there for those 12 hours of training. I hope you've enjoyed this quick video. I apologize for the, the poor audio quality since I'm not using my regular mic that I have back in my studio. And it's a little bit echoey in here now, and I'm sweating, but I'm kind of melting in here. But as Olaf said, some people are worth melting for, and you guys are worth melting for. Hope you've enjoyed this update, and I'll talk to you soon.